Hi, if you're responsible for marketing your business, watch this video for tips on how to use content to really grow your business in 2019. I went to the Atomicon 19 conference last week and here's a roundup of what I learned. First up were Andrew and Pete talking about how to find the time to do marketing for our business so that we can really grow. How do we do this? Well, we can outsource the tasks that aren't core to our business, the things that we aren't so good at, so that we can focus on the tasks that will bring in the income. How do we find the money to outsource? Well, we could ask existing clients to pay us more. But the fear is, if you ask them to pay us more and they say no, what do you do? Well, you can get rid of those clients, find new clients that will pay you more so that you have the money to outsource. The fear then is, I can't find any more clients because I haven't got any time for marketing. So how do you get out of this Catch-22 situation? A few things. Get encouragement from industry peers that are going to support your actions. Secondly, take a couple of baby steps. Let a couple of clients just die off if it's come to the end of a contract or get rid of a couple of them, make a little bit of space and test the idea that if you have more time to focus on your core business, you will find the clients that will pay you more and you will be able to earn more income and thus outsource. If you can do that, you then have more time again and you can really focus on growing your business. Next up was Victoria Fleming. She had great points to make about why we are so uncomfortable about talking about money and selling our business. After all, it's our business. We feel passionately that we are offering a service or product that's going to benefit someone else. So focus on the value you're bringing someone else because it may make you more comfortable discussing how much you're worth. To get over the discomfort of selling, think about why you're doing your business. What is your why? Not necessarily to just bring in the money, but what's that money going to bring to you? For me, for instance, it's freedom. I want to be able to take my children and my family on cool trips and see some of the world. So that is what I'm passionate about. And if you can find that passion and remember why you're doing what you're doing, it will help justify talking to people about what you're worth and charging the right money for it. So the value and the benefit you're bringing to your clients and then follow up. Don't just send out a pitch and ignore it. When you're talking to somebody or when you're emailing, make sure that you schedule the next meeting and that you've got something in place to work to to really close that deal. Next up was Teresa Heath Waring who was focusing on webinars. You are running a webinar in order to sell on your business or your service. Remember that when you're planning them. Start with the ground rules, give some value, don't talk about the how, talk about the why they should be doing things. Use examples and case studies to really underline your authority. At the start of the webinar, outline what they're going to gain by watching the whole thing. If you've got an offer to make at the end, don't shy away from promoting it. State that that's going to happen so they understand that that's what the webinar is going to lead to. And don't forget to underline what they're going to learn if they stick with the webinar. At the end, leave enough time to sell your business. Outline exactly what the next step should look like for someone if they want to work with you. Give them all the links and make it as easy as possible to take the next step towards becoming a client. Dan Knowlton put together a presentation about video and the value that you get from putting video content out there to promote your business. He again addressed the fear people have when they get in front of the camera. But there's no way you're going to get better at it unless you go out there and try. He shared his story. Some of his older videos that were less polished still managed to win him clients because people got to know him and enjoyed the way he presented content. So keep at it and keep going. Don't use excuses such as not having enough equipment or not having been for a haircut to avoid doing video. The one thing's for certain is if you don't get out there and do it, someone else will and no one will see your content. Ultimately, people are buying you. So showing your face and your personality on camera is a really great way of starting to build a relationship and for people to be able to make the decision about whether they want to work with you in the future. I went to a really exciting breakout session with Paul Ince who was talking about chatbots. People are using them more, people are beginning to trust them, they speak to their friends and their family via these methods, so they're very happy to interact with businesses. Chatbot messages experience an 80% open rate and a 65% click-through rate. That blows out of the water the results you get from email marketing. People are also wanting to get responses within an hour, so this is the perfect way to free up your time so that you can take time away from customer service and focus on your core business. How to get started? 
Businesses such as ManyChat offer free training courses or outsource someone to build a chatbot for you. Once it's up and running, you need to pay a little bit of maintenance if you want to make changes, but ultimately you're going to win back all that time that you now waste on responding to FAQs. There's some fear that customers will be put off by talking to a chatbot, but people are increasingly using them, people are used to seeing them on websites. It is a way that they can get the information they need in the time frame they want it. So ultimately you are giving them a better service if you invest. Ian Anderson Gray talked us through using live video for social. It's increasingly being used and people really engage with it, so it's well worth investing in. When you open your live video, be sure to greet your replay audience first. Bear in mind, after the live video, it's going to remain as a post on your Facebook feed. So if you're watching it in a day's time, it makes sense that someone's saying hello to you and responding to you as a non-live viewer. Then lead into your welcome to the live. The other thing that this intro does is buy you some time for people to hop onto live before you get into the core topic. We all worry about live. It's live. What if something goes wrong? But the more human we are, the better people are going to connect with us. So embrace what makes us human. Go for it. What is the worst that could happen? He added tons of value about equipment to use and so on. But ultimately, you can do it from your phone. Get started in that way and then invest in the future if you're getting the results you want. The other value with live video is as it comes on, it notifies your followers that you are going live. So it really attracts a good audience. It gives people an opportunity to interact with you and build a relationship with you and feel that they're getting immediate feedback from you. He also touched on using messenger bots to respond to people during your live. So you can set up your chat bot so that if you put a trigger word into the comments, such as see more, the bot will automatically send you, for instance, a PDF with more information or give you a link to see more on the website. So in real time, people are getting the information they need. Chris Ducker wrapped up Atomicon by focusing on personal brand and how to build credibility and authority online. He spent time reinforcing the message that ultimately what makes you different from other businesses is you. So be you, express your personality and be confident that your vibe will attract your tribe. If people don't like it, then they're not the right clients for you. Approach attracting potential clients if you're a magnet. You want to repel the people that aren't right for you, that aren't the right fit for your business and who won't get the benefit that you want to deliver. And you want to attract the people that really fit with you, who are going to work well with you and together you're going to get great results. First step is to craft your personal brand statement. This is just a couple of lines. It's ultimately talking about the benefit you bring and the results you get. So mine would be, I help businesses build valuable relationships on social to help boost their positive brand awareness and drive sales. Step two is really understanding your audience. Write down exactly what your audience looks like or what your audiences look like. Describe exactly their demographic, their age, where they live, what they like. Really create a character in your mind. Step three, when you're thinking about your content and how you come across through your marketing of your business is to bear in mind your personal brand statement and really think hard about the audience you're talking to. Remember that character and speak to them. A great way to build relationships with people online is to offer help and to support them. So think about the problems they have and the solutions you can give them. Once you've got your character in mind, you can really understand what their problems are, what are their pain points, what is the nitty gritty of it. So in my case, lots of people can do social themselves. But the main thing is people don't have the time. They are so busy focusing on their business that social comes second, and yet they know they need to do it. When you understand your audience's pain points, you can really focus on the benefits that you can bring them and address those in all your content marketing. Chris made a great point. We all suffer from comparisonitis, but don't compare your first step with someone else's 100th step. There's always someone further along their journey, and that shouldn't put you off getting started because everyone started somewhere. The last point I want to make is that attending Atomic on 19 was so much fun. If you're interested in more content like this, follow me on social or come along to my website and have a look at my blog.